comparison to see whether this group is significantly different from this group, to see whether this group is significantly different from this group. Okay? The p-values should come from one-way ANOVA and not from p-test. So compare more than two groups. If you, for single plot, when you go down the menu for comparing many groups, it will tell you what test to use, one way or another, okay? T-test is nowhere in sight in that menu. One way used to compare more than two means from independent groups, then it's the age different between white patients, black patients, Hispanic patients, okay? So, for example, if we use race to divide the patient into different groups from comparison. In America, it's multiracial. So in Vietnam, probably uh, it's 100% Asian. But in America, we have white patients, black patients, Asian patients, Hispanic patients. So we have many groups. So if we compare whether the age in your cohort is significantly different within your population, you're comparing more than two groups, then t-test is not the appropriate test. Unless you define it differently, you group them only into two groups. You compare the white patients versus non-white patients. Then if you have only two groups, white versus non-white, then you can use the t-test. Two-way ANOVA is used to compare more than two means by two factors. Two factors, meaning that you're having a two, one factor with two variables, I mean two, two possibilities, and then another factor with two possibilities. Here, for example, is the age different between the male and the females with and without pneumonia? So here you have four groups. You have the males that have pneumonia, male without pneumonia, females with pneumonia, and females without pneumonia. So in this situation, then you can use this test two-way ANOVA. Okay. And you will also, with this two-way ANOVA, you have the uh, chance to also look at the interaction between the two factors. Curse call Wallace one-way ANOVA and compares the continuous variables that are not normally distributed between more than two groups. So it's sort of like the t-test situation. In the t-test, you assume normal distribution. In the one-way ANOVA, you assume the normal distribution. Okay. In the t-test, when you fail the normal distribution with comparing two groups, you can use the Mont Whitney U test. Here, you can use the curse call Wallace one-way ANOVA that it is a non-parametric equivalent to the one-way ANOVA. For example, is the length of stay in the hospital different by ethnicity? Okay. It analyzes the non-parametric test uh, and the, it can compare more than two independent samples. Repeat measures ANOVA. It's used to assess the change in two or more continuous measurements uh, made on the same person. You can also compare groups and adjust for covariates. For example, uh, with this question, uh, do changes in the vital signs within the first 24 hours of an admitted cancer patient predict which patient will develop sepsis? Change in vital signs then you compare it before and after, the repeat of measures. So you analyze and the, the uh, before and after values, repeated measures, and then this type of uh, analysis, it falls into the category of a general linear model. Very often, we compare data that are in discrete numbers, like for example, the number of cells or the number of persons. 
and and within that fixed number of groups, there are changes in terms of categorization uh, and the pr proportion of distribution within those groups. This is an example here. For example, uh, we're comparing the uh, patients that were treated with a drug called bevacizumab or the uh, peculated interferon. And then when we compare the number of patients that are uh, male or the female, okay. for example, here in this group, I have 50% male and 50% female. I mean, 50% male. And in this group, I have 40.9% female and 59.1% male. Okay. The percentage is different. Okay. The number of patients. Okay. There's 11 patients in this group, and there's nine patients in this group. There's 11 patients in this group. There's 13%. Have uh, 13 patients in this group. There is a difference. Is this difference significant or not? When we have these numbers distributed in different proportions, in different groups, how do we know that indeed this distribution is not a random distribution, that there is indeed a difference between them? What kind of test do we use to look for differences in proportions and percentages? Chi-square test. And this is perhaps the most commonly used statistical test. It tests if two or more percentages are different. For example, suppose you have a study of 933 patients with cancer, and 10% of the men would develop pneumonia compared to what 5% of the women, okay? So you have 44 out of 40, 440 men. You have 36 women out of 714 women. So what is the probability that this observation was by chance alone? In order to evaluate that, you know, this is a univariate analysis. It, has only one factor. It looks for the difference in the distribution and it's an unmatched sample. It's nominal, meaning that this is a category variable so that you're comparing the distribution among them. And you have two or more groups. But in order to use the chi-square test, the number of subjects in distributing in the groups have to be greater than 20. What if the total number of cases is less than 20? There's an alternate alternative. Fisher's exact test. This test can be used for two by two tables when the number of cases is too small to satisfy the assumption of the chi-square. So if the expected number of the cases in any of the cells is less than one, the cell meaning that the, the uh, cell in the contingency table, do you know what a contingency table is? Right. So you have group, You have the contingency table. You have the two by four, two by two. You have four squares. Okay. The uh, horizontal grouping is like, for example, uh, two characteristics: the patients that are, that are male and female. And the vertical grouping: pneumonia, no pneumonia. Okay. So each box, in the first box, are the people that have the uh, male with pneumonia. The next box below, then a male, the patients with male patients without pneumonia, so on and so forth. 
you know, this type of square with four boxes, instead of called a two by two contingency table. So in this case, here, if any, in any of the boxes, in any cell, then your expected number of cases is less than one, then you cannot use the chi-square test. You have to use the Fisher exact test. Now, very often, we look at when we do experiments and we have two variables, and we want to know whether they are correlated. Okay, if I want to say, if I increase the expression of this gene, the other gene's expression also changes accordingly. Okay, or if I increase the gene, the increased expression of gene A, the expression of gene B would increase. Okay, or that's a positive correlation. Or if I have a negative correlation, so if I increase the expression of gene A, the expression of gene B would decrease. So in these cases, we look at the correlation, and the test to do that is the Pearson correlation. It's used to assess the linear association between two continuous variables. If you have a R value of equal to one, that's a perfect correlation. If you have an R value of zero, there's absolutely no correlation. If you have an R value of minus one, that's a perfect inverse correlation. Here, and then in an example, now if I look at the expression of uh, a gene called PTPRO, and I try to, I want to look at the correlation of the expression of that PTPRO gene with the amount of cell proliferation. The Ki67 is a gene that would mark the nuclei. Uh, if you stain it, it will mark the nuclei of the cells that are proliferating. So the percentage of Ki positive 67 cells would tell us how many, how what percentage of the cells in the population.